really excited to bring them back on to uh, the Chainlink AMA to unpack a little bit of what they've had going on uh, for the last few months. So, uh, Ray, welcome to the party here. Uh, great to have yeah, you. On. Thanks for having me, Harris. Awesome. Well, we know, uh, you know, Tracer V2 released last month, uh, which is awesome. Uh, but before hopping into that, can you share a little bit with the viewers of what you guys have been working on? We know you used to be like node operators at the earlier stages. So can you give us a little bit of the history of what you guys have been working on and bring us maybe, you know, in a few minutes to the to the modern day? Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, like you mentioned, we sort of started our crypto journey through Chainlink, um, which is why it's always awesome to, to catch up with everyone and, yeah, talk about where we've gone since the early node operator days. So... I guess the initial thing we really saw in crypto was how much of a problem data was going to be, which is why we've, you know, loved and, and backed Chainlink from day one. So we really wanted to figure out how we could be involved in essentially bringing data on chain so that then we could build other things on chain. Um, and yeah, Chainlink just made the most sense for us at the time. So we've been an, a node operator for the past two years and basically is servicing a lot of the, the really major feeds on mainnet on different L2s. Uh, and that's sort of what sent us down this tunnel of then wanting to build financial primitives. So at Tracer, we're building derivatives infrastructure. Uh, we're not just building like a single thing, but we're building different contracts, different um, tooling, different interfaces to allow people to use derivatives. Um, and derivatives are really useful for either managing your risk, hedging your exposure, or taking directional bets, so long or short on pretty much anything. Um, and I guess due to our like chain link background, the big differentiating factor between us and a lot of other derivatives protocols is we've built a very like modular system. And the idea there was to be able to plug in any chain link price feed, any data feed for that matter, um, any settlement, Cal, uh, any settlement collateral, sorry. So you can settle markets in any ERC-20 and basically all the pieces just plug in together um, and you can customize your own derivatives. So yeah, that's that's really what we're working on at the moment. That's incredible. And I know that you've all been working on V2 and that was released. So maybe you want to chat a little bit about that and um, also maybe share how going to market with this is a little different than V1. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, we released V2 just over a month ago now, um, and it's gone pretty well so far. We've been migrating a lot of liquidity from V1 to V2 and have a lot of new users that are sort of jumping in. Um, the really major changes for us were, first of all, we customized the actual financials of the contracts a little bit. So there's this concept called volatility decay, which basically is if you hold a position over time, you slowly lose money, even if the position is moving in your favor. Um, so we've reduced that in V2 by changing a few bits with the contracts. Uh, and we also enabled fully permissionless markets, which we're really excited about. So V1 had that capability, but we kind of just wanted to test the waters a little bit first. We weren't too certain how it would go. Uh, there's a bit of complexity in creating your own derivative. We need a few things set up. So we didn't enable it in V1. In V2, we've turned that on. So we're really excited to see infrastructure built out around that because it's still quite early days. Um, and I know a lot of other people have sort of been going down that, that train. Uh, there's the, the Rari guys and a lot of other people doing permissionless infrastructure. So I think over the next few years, we'll see a bit more of that as well. Yeah, man. So just curious to get your take here. So it sounds like there's a bit of a difference, right? And so I'm trying to understand a little bit more around how you came to these things to augment in V1 to V2. So what were some of the driving principles behind these changes you guys thought to make? Yeah, I guess there's sort of two focuses. There's the really like financial backend focus. And then there's the, what does the community want and what's usable for real users? So on the financial side, there was a lot of basically monitoring the contracts, which is one of the really cool things about building on chain, right? We have all the data. We can see the results being reported by the chain link price feeds. We can compare it to the return of our uh, perpetual pools primitive. And we can kind of just compare the two. Um, and we use that then through our FinEng team to basically figure out what improvements we can make to make the product more effective. And that's sort of the, the deep financial engineering, software engineering side. Um, 
And then the other side is, yeah, just actually talking to the community, talking to users and seeing what the market is really valuing and, and following. Um, we, from day one, have kind of believed in this fully permissionless decentralized infrastructure. So we wanted to make sure what we were building actually held up to that. Um, and we think it's pretty important, right? We don't want to be the controllers of a protocol and we don't even want the DAO to be the controllers of what can be deployed on the protocol. Um, the nice thing about open source code is anyone can use it. So we just want to make it easy for people to come along, use it for whatever they want. Um, so yeah, really looking into DAOs and communities and seeing how they can leverage these tools, which is has been good fun. Yeah, I was looking into that a bit. It's really awesome how you've decentralized it thus far. And I'd love for you to expand a little bit on that whole DAO aspect and how your community ties, ties into all of that. Yeah, so we took an interesting approach. We were actually pretty much a DAO from day one. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we had a... Um, we had a, a token released that anyone could claim um, and we spread that throughout our close network and then got that spread further throughout crypto. Um, so we've had a community with us pretty much from the start, which meant we always had someone to bounce ideas off to get contributions from um, and also to just help figure out specific things about the product. Um, really the people that stuck around were the people that were most interested in using the product as well. Um, so they're a good sounding board for all of that. The other, I guess, really important community piece for us is actually just getting people involved in crypto. Like we're building these tools so people can use them. So it wouldn't make sense for us to just build them in isolation. Uh, and we've had a lot of great community contributors come in. We actually have a, uh, a guy who joined us. We just met him in the Discord. And for East Denver earlier this year, he drove from LA to Denver with a massive thing about merch for like 18 hours. So how, yeah, how it goes to show. Oh my gosh, that's insane. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Um, so yeah, people in the community are really, really passionate, which is so good to see. Yeah, and I think we see that a lot at, you know, in Ch at Chainlink. Uh, we have a huge community as well. And so seeing that Tracer is also aligned there is really awesome. And um, just seeing how you're tying it all together into derivatives is, is quite interesting because I, I find that to be, you know, it's a harder topic to understand for somebody that's newer into crypto. So putting it into that DAO format is quite interesting. Yeah, the Link Marines were definitely a uh, like an early inspiration for trying to build this sort of cultish community. <laughs> we love to see it. Go yeah. Ahead. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, I mean, to tie it back to, to what you guys are building real quick, right? So uh, it sounds like there's a great focus on what the community wants, giving a little bit more power to them. Um, as you've taken inspiration from the community and some of the the financial instrument opportunity that was an unmet need basically for the industry, you know, where did our colleagues at Chainlink Labs come in and you know, how did how did Chainlink fit into that broader vision you guys were working on? Yeah, one of the I guess most exciting things we're working on with with Chainlink and Chainlink Labs is basically building out bits and pieces of infrastructure to allow more price feeds to be deployed. Uh, that's been a big thing for us from pretty much when we first launched Tracer that we wanted to tap into not just the price feeds that existed currently, but really be able to give communities these tools to leverage Chainlink and deploy markets that they want. Um, so we're sort of, I guess you can say we're building our own Don, like our own decentralized Oracle network around Tracer that enables our community, other DAOs, different communities to come to us, deploy a new Chainlink feed, and then deploy a market for it. Um, so that collaboration has been really, gay, really great because Chainlink has given us access to a lot of tooling, um, a lot of different node operators that then we can then rely on ourselves internally um, and spin up new feeds, which yeah, is, is important for us. Absolutely. And so if we were to look forward a little bit, um, so we're talking about a little bit what's in the here and now. Um, no, you guys have uh, moved forward with a lot of different things. So the voyage was announced that I saw, you know, before hopping on last month. Um, can you expand on that a little bit and maybe even just more broadly speaking, the roadmap holistically for the next year plus? Yeah. So the whole idea with the voyage is it's almost a, a journey through Trace of Perpetual Pools, our current product. Uh, the idea is that there's a lot of complexity in the product, but at the end of the day, it is quite simple. Um, 
you can use this derivative and you can just get a leverage token that you can hold in your wallet. So we want to show off all the different features that the product has to offer in a nice, simple way. Uh, so yeah, the voyage is a, it's, it's planned to be six weeks, sorry, six stages. And the idea is every stage is a new market. So the market rebalances every 12 hours. It's a much simpler product. So you know exactly when and when you can enter and exit. Um, and then there's going to be a few other things throughout the journey. So we're looking at like NFT markets. We're looking at a few more real world assets, a flipping market, which will be really cool. Uh, and then, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the idea. So if you're interested in learning about derivatives, playing around with things, earning PO apps uh, that will have use at some point in the future, um, yeah, come, come join the voyage, just jump in our Discord and there's plenty of people that, that want to help take you on that journey. In terms of the longer term roadmap, so some of the things we're really focusing on for the next six to 12 months. First of all, we are going to finally enter the perpetual swaps game. So our current derivative that we've built, Perpetual Pools, is a little bit different to Perpetual Swaps. Uh, so we're fleshing out Perpetual Swaps so that we have both offerings under Tracer. Um, there's a decent chance that we look into options towards the later end of this year, early next year. Um, and then the other big piece for us is really improving tokenomics. So we're putting a big focus on how the Tracer token can actually be used to give a lot more value back to the community but also a lot more power to the community. So those are kind of the three pillars we've got at the moment to focus on. Well, it sounds like you're busy, <laughs> but it sounds like you're doing some amazing things and definitely all areas that our community can relate to and I'm sure wants to learn more about as well. So um, yeah, to close things out, where can everyone find you and how can they learn more about Tracer? Yeah, so we're just tracer.finance. That site will have links to all of our, our socials and our Discord. The best place to get in contact with us is Discord. Um, we're all pretty open. So yeah, just jump in, come have a chat. We're happy to answer any questions really. Also, Ray, well, as I said at the head of this, uh, you've been involved, your team's been involved with the, the Chainlink community for years. So uh, great to have you join on today and to give uh, the broader community an update on what you're working on. So thanks for the time. Yeah, thanks each for having me. Thank you.